Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306. I just wanted to make a quick video. So this is the, the cheap Chinese multimeter that I got. Uh, these were really cheap. I think something like less than $5 shipped. So with free shipping, which is amazing. But it's a uh, quality that you'd kind of expect. Not even a fuse. It uses this <laughs> what looks like an incandescent bulb. Um, probably going to eventually replace it with a socket. And actually so I can put a... Uh, replaceable fuse in there. You can see very shoddily done shunt resistor and interestingly enough they kind of nick the metal in order to change the resistance slightly. Um, use a piezo, no, pretty much no strain relief on this so I'm probably gonna have to do something about that. Uh, but the neat feature is it has a backlight. So I can turn it on here and it's really bright. It's a lot brighter than I need but I notice if you press and hold the button it lights at a comfortable light value, um, it, well, in terms of like the intensity, that's not too bad. So I kind of want to have it so that it's always at this level. So uh, what I can do actually is I can take the other meter and let's measure how much current that that draws because 9 volt batteries are not known to have very much uh, capability in terms of capacity. So I have a second one of these meters here. So maybe I can get that in frame. And I can just turn this on. And then, so if I intersect, or, you know, in place of the battery snap, I put this in series, I can get the actual measurement uh, positive to here, negative to here. So you can see right now it's drawing about 0.6 milliamps when it's just kind of not lit up but still measuring. I hit this, it jumps to above 20. Wow. That can't be right. So it's saying here, it's like... Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, it has an auto dim function. So it goes to 0 0.6 when it's uh, just on. Okay. So with the light on, it goes to like 25, something at its peak. But if I press and hold this, it only draws about 1.5. 1.3 milliamps, which is actually acceptable. I don't keep my meters on all the time, and I'll make this so that you can shut it off uh, yourself anyway. So yeah, that's an acceptable modification, I would say. So what I'm going to do is modify one of these meters with a, this will be a five minute hack, with a little jumper that can go into the battery bay so that if if it's on here, it'll permanently short the the button together uh, closed so that it'll always be on the backlight. And all you have to do is when you want to disable it is just move the jumper to the side and then it'll act like normal. So what I'm going to do is trace out where the wires go here and um, you know solder some wires to there and I'll show you after I'm done that and finally show you it in operation after the modification has been done if you guys have the same meter or are interested in doing something similar. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. I just soldered two of the wires um, to very, very small solder points. So I traced it out on the other side. You can see the button contacts, and it happens to go to two different vias. Uh, one of them is under this uh, PC PTC, uh, which is a temperature sensing element, and it goes... Uh, right next to a capacitor, and the other one uh, goes to a via right above the two transistors here. Uh, if you guys are interested, it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, you just visually follow the wire from the buttons. So anyway, I just took some really thin wire, wrapped it around, brought it over to this side. So here's the thing. These meters, even though they say, you know, they're, they're cat, what are they supposed to be? Cat 2, 600 volts. Uh, protection and whatnot. Um, I would never use one of these meters to actually measure anything high voltage. Anything above like uh, probably 60 to 80 volts, I wouldn't even bother because the isolation is just not there. It's not safe to do so, especially with this dinky little fuse and the lack of clearance. I mean, look at these. They're like right next to each other, COM to V+. plus. You can easily arc over if there's junk, and you can see there's like flux in there, so it's going to short if you, you know, if you put a high, high enough voltage on here, so don't even bother. So anyway, so that's my disclaimer, and so I, that's why I kind of say, okay, it, it's partially okay to run this wire kind of over semi-near high voltage stuff, because I'm never going to measure anything above probably like 20 or 30 volts with this anyway. So anyway, so I put the jumper right in here, so when we close it up, you just got to seat the top part in 
first, make sure this is clipped in. And then you can kind of maybe if the wires would go in. There we go. So yeah, you can kind of have this part exposed slightly. Um, and then you can tuck it in a little bit. It's held and snug by the battery. And finally, this just slides right on then. So let's see if it works. Oh yeah, there you go. So the button does nothing now until we pull this. So if we were to pull this, you can see it goes fully bright and then it'll dim down in a sec. There we go, it dims down. I do like that feature actually, how it kind of PWMs down. But there we go. And if I put it back in again, it's on permanently at this dim value, uh, dim light intensity. So this should last quite a while actually, because as we measured, it was like 1.3 milliamps. So it'll consume, it'll, it'll probably half the battery life, you know, a little less than half than if you just had, you know, no backlight on ever and you just use the meter. But I think that's a, a useful sacrifice. So this makes it really visible. I mean, in real life, I can, I can look at that easily, you know, at an oblique angle and I can easily see what the value is. So I think this is a good modification to do. So I can just switch this on, do measurements, have it on its stand and never have to worry about, you know, reaching over to hit that button because I can't see the screen. So yeah, this is a pretty useful modification for me. Um, I could have easily put in a switch or something and cut a hole. I, do, I don't have any small switches on me, so that's why I did the jumper route that I did here, and I'm not going to be changing it that often. I'm just going to leave it on pretty much all the time. So yeah, I just wanted to do a very quick hack um, and make a quick video on this guy. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and hopefully you found that this mod is uh, kind of useful if you have something similar that, that you would like to do. Um, it's very easy to figure out. I mean, I literally just spent five minutes actually soldering this, finding it out, soldering it, and and then filming took longer than that. <laughs> so anyway, if you guys like the video, um, like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you guys do usually. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you guys later.